was wrapping up to be a pretty quiet week in Alluvium, which never happens. But then they decided to drop the Alluvitars trailer. Obviously the biggest news of the week, but also we'll go through Twitter as always and go through the leaks through Discord and anything else that I found in Discord. So stick around to find out more. So obviously, as I said, the Iluvatars trailer is the biggest thing that dropped this week alongside the website. It was released early then. I think there was technical problems with the website, but it is all up and running now. Most other creators have also done their views on it. I have. I'll put my video up above, but I'd definitely suggest you go watch the other creators as well to see what they've found and what, what they think about the site and the buying and everything and these little Easter eggs you get, little winky flish here. But I'm going to start off this week with this. I want everyone to type down below why this is relevant and what this was before I get to it, probably in a few minutes. But anyway, have a look at that. Tell me what you think it is before I get to it. And then you'll find out in a few minutes what this actually is and what it came to be. But we'll start off with a few things that I found from Twitter. We've got Aaron here just talking about... The VCs claiming their tokens because the uh, unlocks started to happen across this week. A couple of VC claimed tokens yesterday as they would, but they put them straight into the ILV ETH pool for 12 more months. Most of them see the long play. Everyone was complaining that people are going to be jumping out, the price goes down, there'll be so much sell pressure. This didn't happen. Alluvium's price has pretty much stayed pretty consistent from what I've seen. Um, and also, when does the rev diz kick off? Very soon, testing is underway in the background. They just deployed some updates, some more small tests are live, and people will out, people will be able to verify they got the right amount. So this is great. Rev diz is coming soon. I'd say if you wanted to stake some more, this is probably the time to do it. Again, this is not financial advice. It's just probably what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be staking a bit more in this. Uh, run at the moment seeing as it's so cheap um, and I want to get some more as much rev dizzy as possible so Lars asked anyone want to speculate on utility Kieran access so this is utility for the Louvertars. don't know what the access is for have no idea but the utility is going to probably get named very soon it seems like they're very close to releasing this which is great news I'm sure it will be out before we start buying so everyone knows what's what's what. Uh, Figment asked for a tasty leak from Aaron. He doesn't leak often, so here we go. Uh, I think it was like Ramfire, maybe Titanor or Goliath and Giza. I'm probably wrong on that, but it is great. I reckon someone will pay good money for that. So here's a few points from Aaron going backwards and forwards with someone. Just talking about what happens if you encounter a dark hollow and you don't have a good enough shard, but then Aaron goes, what happens if you try to deploy fewer units to maximize your dimensional stability? We'll go along with that in a second because I didn't know what this was and end up losing. Keyboard meets wall. I would be furious if I found a dark hollow and didn't catch it. And it seems like there is three or four different ways that it may happen that you may not have the chance or you may not catch it, which really sucks, but that's what this game's all about. Rams, I had no idea about this mechanic. The higher stage creatures reduce stability, or just the number. Aaron, the higher the mastery cost, the more unstable it is. Easier to defeat, but less t less time to capture when... So, when you were kids, you had to choose your adventure, or you have to choose choose your, ass, your own ass clencher. So, what he's talking about is, say you have 140 mastery points to use, I, I don't know what it's going to be, and you use the whole 140 you're going to have less chances at catching the alluvials. If you only use 40, then your dimensional stability is much, much higher, which means that you will have more, you'll hopefully have more ch chances to capture. So, and that's what Aaron says down the bottom. Time is not a literal thing, just more or fewer t capture chances. So as it breaks out, maybe it, um, the dimensional stability is broken and you get kicked out or you cat you or it breaks out and you get the, another chance this all depends on how well your stability is within the capture so I didn't know about this this is 
I don't know if this was a thing that's already around, but this just adds to the difficulty of capturing your alluvials. Uh, do we need to find blueprints for Mozart for any drone? Probably re reading way too much into this, but are there different drones? They're technically a lot, they're just drone configurations. So it seems like we have our Mozart, but he can look or you may be able to customize it into different ways. Maybe he helps differently or scans faster or does this and he might look different. So you need blueprints for each of them. So here's the Krypton. I want, I'll be reading what everyone's guesses were, but this was the original game that uh, Grant said they were making. He said Cryptlets there, but looks like it was Krypton. Aaron wanted a planet they were on to be called Luvium, and at least for a few weeks we were arguing over the name. Initially, I didn't like Alluvium, but eventually, just asked why not use that? It's better than the other trash names. So none of them wanted Alluvium, and that's what it is now. I love the name because it's, as some other people said, you can change it into Alluvidex and everything like that. The Alluvi is going to be synonymous with AAA gaming, I reckon. But yeah, it's it's funny how they started with this very simple Pixelmon game and now we're on to a fully fledged game of the next 10, 20, 30 years. But I wonder how many people knew what this was. It would be funny to see. So as always, we head over to the leaks and we'll do a quick scroll through. Got some updates on some icy land. I'm guessing that's Halcyon Sea. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we have this plant that shoots up like a 4th of July fireworks. Uh, that, that seems so awesome. Like You'll be able to see this from across the map and just be like, that's the plant that I want to get to. Let's keep scrolling. We've got some more armor here from the tree kangaroo line. I'm unsure if this tree kangaroo had been released or not, but he looks absolutely awesome. And by looking at this, it's going to be shock. So you got another ice sculpture. Then you got the snail Mozart, which is obviously a Tatapi line, which I think will be highly sought after. Everyone loves those snails. As, as we go down, we got some more plants. Someone asked, what type of high you're going to get off this room? <laughs> I love that. So we got a, we got some more pictures of the polar bear. Um, obviously being censored by Borat. They do this on a lot of their skins. They put shorts on them and stuff like that. It's just so it's not R rated, I believe. I don't know if they're taking a piss or this is an actual thing that they need to do is put shorts or heads in front of them at the moment. Super weird if so. But anyway, it's so they don't get censored. You still get to see his butt and little tail, but he still looks sick. There was this 4th of July poster that was posted. Um, you got Atlas over here being the ref for the volleyball game. I think this is a fire panda that uh, Infoluvial won the first Aluvatar challenge. Uh, some more signature moves were released. So this is Kukaraf. Obviously, you've caught it, it comes down, it's like, yeah, see me, and then does his little animation. You got your squiz. Oh, that's just his idol. Nothing too spectacular, but I love how everyone's got their own idols. And that was sick. Like a little um, ball rolling. I wish his attack was like that. Maybe his attack is like that. Oh, I don't look close enough, sorry. So you got Ramfire Sound being updated. Sounds awesome, hey. The that's the amount of detail they're going into. Just sound off the charts. Even you got water footsteps here. You won't be able to hear it, but I'd go into the leaks and go and listen to all these. They sound really amazing, really in depth. And then we come to some of my favourite lands that if you don't know yet, but Crystal Shores is just, it's the place I want to be. I'd love to put on the headset and walk around this place and just feel like you're there. Just be fully immersed in this. Look how small the, there's your ranger there. This is just absolutely bonkers. Go in there, have a zoom in, have a look around. Like you've even got floating crystals. Yeah. So, if you haven't seen, Grant's been in the CC streaming 
on the Discord working on this ship. It's so cool to go and watch him. He plays some bangers behind him as he's playing, as he's um, rendering and that. And a few people in there chatting. It's it's just a great place to be to see how they work and how quickly they work. Because I'm I'm watching and going, how is he doing that? Some more updates from Abyssal Basin. This just looks like a murky deep forest, and these plants are absurd. Colors look amazing. Sizing. I can't, again, this would be a great place to run around in VR. Tiger Boreal, maybe it was Tiger Boreal from up the top, but this is where the battle board's going to be situated. Obviously, all the different re regions are going to have their own situation, and they're going to look different, which I, I love. It really immerses you into that region a bit more. Here's the uh, fireworks again. Look at that. Even the ripples coming out afterwards. That just looks sick. So we got Rip Lance. I think this is just his idol. Little twitches. Then this is just a test for the water, just to see how well the water looks like. It's nothing else. People were trying to look into this too much, but it's literally just them running around testing what the water looks like. They haven't decided to do swimming yet swimming takes up a lot of time so maybe down the future they will do swimming they said but they just wanted to see how the water reacts when the person runs through cool little video again would be cool to go and watch i'm not going to watch the hunt minute and a half right now and then we got this last one showing um accident and allura trapped from what I read into it, this is what happens after you defeat them and then you're going to try and capture them. This is their, you holding them still so you can get the shard onto them. I think looks, this looks amazing and how they're trying to get out and it's all reactive to what they're doing. So we're over to Twitter now as always. As you can see, I've only got a couple t couple today. There wasn't too much that come out. Obviously, Iluvatars again. In-game in, in -game avatar for the Illuvium universe. If you haven't heard about it or don't know anything about it, then go and have a look. Go for a deep dive. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be the best PFP on the market. Kieran posted about this. Um, it should be... Most people in the Philippines should have seen this by now, but there's going to be a meetup on July 9th. If you're in the Philippines or can get there, why not go, go along, go and meet some of the other people face-to-face -face that you may have talked to over the net. Roger, he posted this for the first time. Uh, that's Ray, the Red Panda, as I said before, the winner of the last alluvial. It was just a happy 4th of July poster that they released. I think it looks really great. And as I said on my Twitter, they can take alluvium and put it into any, any design and it looks great. Like, this isn't their normal design. Um, and I still love it. So, if you're not already, follow this Alluvium land spot. It's really cool. Just updates whenever there's any land sold. But someone bought a piece of Tier 2 land for 10.5 ETH. $11,290 approximately. This is ridiculous. I'm guessing this is to finish off a mega city. Unsure, but... Congrats to whoever had that tier 2. You have absolutely outdone yourself with that. That is amazing. And last one, Iluvatar Utility, possibly a new game. So, Kieran, he said they're going to be bigger than land. That is unfathomable at the moment because land is going to earn you, well, can be a very big revenue stream for you. I cannot even, I don't even know what they're going to, do for Luvitars, but I'm so keen. Mabsy bullish, obviously. They were already equal to projects with ballistic valuations generating stupid amounts of vault revenues, but Rogers V2 has the ability to morph into something epic for collectors. It's not just a PFP. It's a new game. So we're going to have four games, not three. Alpha right here, guys. Put in the comments as well, what do you think this is going to be? Because I've been racking my brain for age, ages and I cannot even have guesses of what it's going to be let me know what your thoughts are in the video in the comments below 
hit the subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any other videos. But that is me for this week, guys. Thank you.